Sisters, peace, sisters, peace. Um, today's soliloquy, you know, I was just thinking about courage and fear and how these two are really just intertwined. You know, when you have plans, when you have goals, when you have dreams, let me say dreams, let me not say plans, let me say dreams, because dreams usually, and a lot of the times, have no plans to back them. They have no, you know, there's no plans, there's no strategy. You just dream. And a lot of the times people never really get to leave those dreams. They will never really get to experience those dreams in fruition because a lot of people are held back by fear. And a lot of people are driven by fear. Two different things, held back and driven. Those who are held back by fear actually do not take action because of that fear. So they fear the unknown. Most of the time, you're not really sure what you're fearing. You just fear because... You have never really experienced that. And you're just thinking about what may or what may not be. The saying that a battle of if is never fought, but it's always won. Because what ifs, will never, you'll never know what if or what if not. Because it will always already be. So a battle of if is never fought, it's always won. So that's one group. Those who are held back by fear from taking action. Whether it's better good action, whether it's positive or negative action, but a lot of people are held back by fear. So I would say now that being held back by fear, maybe fear of consequences for bad actions may be healthy, but being held back by fear, fear of disappointment, fear of failure from taking good actions and actions that will in the long term benefit you, then that one is negative. It's really, really unadvised, uh, unadvisable. So that's one group. The other group is a group who's driven by fear. Very dangerous. It's very dangerous to be driven by fear because you either fear something you already know or something you've seen or experienced. So those ones who fear the unknown, they tend to not want to take certain actions. And those ones who fear the known or something they've already experienced, they actually tend to take certain actions that drive them away from that. Now, sometimes this may be positive. You grew up in poverty, you've experienced, you know, abuse, domestic abuse, and you take a decision that you don't want to ever have that experience ever again. So some people, even though they're in abusive relationships or in toxic relationships, they will stay in those relationships because they've seen what divorce does. Some people, they'll continue, you know, working in certain environments where they know there could be more, but they're afraid that, you know, if they take that choice to leave that job, if they take that decision to start a business, they might fail and they might have to go back to being unemployed. They might have to go back to poverty. So you are afraid because you were once unemployed, you were once poor. So now you're afraid to, to take a decision or you decide to take a decision to remain in a particular environment, which then may limit your growth. So these are two different groups of people. One held back by fear from taking certain actions. The other one driven by fear and therefore taking certain actions that may, you know, you know, help them in the moment, but in the long run may really hold them back. And I think it's very important to understand that fear will always be present. There's nothing wrong with fear, really. But then there's something wrong when fear is what leads you to decisions. Now, the third leg of this conversation, courage. A lot of people think when you are courageous, then you don't have fear. That's a fallacy. We all have fear. It's part of human wiring. You know, it's part of our psychology. It's part of our brain. We have a lot of fear of a lot of things. Some people fear mice. Big, giant men will be afraid of a mouse. Some people fear insects. Some people fear snakes. But then those are not really dangerous for majority of people. But it gets hectic when now you fear taking certain actions, when you fear leaving certain experiences. Now, that's where courage comes in. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather to actually take action within the context of that fear. So I think Nelson Mandela said it best that it is not the absence of fear that defines courage, but rather the triumph over fear. So you're not wrong. You're not a bad person. You're not a coward when you have fear. But then it's bad for you, it's dangerous for you, it's limiting for you to be afraid to take action because you have fear. It's fine to have that fear, but it's even better to take action whilst you have that fear. Triumph over the fear. Use it as fuel. The moment you feel afraid, then use it as fuel to take that decision, to take that leap. It could be something physical, you know, taking care of your health. It could be something like uh, maybe taking on a new course and really just developing your skill sets. But whatever it is, you know, 
triumph over that fear. And I know sometimes you fear something you've experienced before, a failure. You went to university, you started a new business and it failed, and then you don't want to try again, you know. You prefer the security of a job. Nothing wrong with security, really. But then there's something wrong with security when you can have more than just security and you're only holding back to that security because you're afraid of the uncertainty that comes with taking risks. So, there's nothing wrong with being afraid. There's everything wrong with being afraid and holding on to that fear and not taking certain decisions. So, today, in this soliloquy, this thought that I'm having, let's do it afraid. Let's do it afraid. If it means failing, that's fine. If it means being disappointed, that's fine. If it means, you know, experiencing trauma, that's fine. Then you can recenter from that, apply the new lived experience, the new lessons that you learned, and do better. Peace.